Well, hi, everybody. Um, so stalling, um, I actually got into intermittent fasting because of stalling. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through a little bit of a lecture that I actually gave to our shape practitioners. So there's gonna be some technical stuff here. And I've always been told uh, by other, other doctors that you, know, you gotta dumb it down for the public. I disagree with that. I, I think the public is a lot smarter than we give you credit for. So I'm gonna use some big words, but I'll explain them in a way that hopefully will be pretty, pretty simple. So let's move to the next slide. So what is fasting? Well, it's a willing, and that's the key word there, abstinence or reduction in food, beverages, or both for a defined period of time where starvation is a forced state of reduction of food. It's an interesting thing. We use our urine analysis to spot starvation and most diets, well, I think all diets fail because the brain gets a message that it's starving, but this has to do with what your intention is. If your intention is to fast for whatever reason, we don't see the starvation markers kick in. I find that a fascinating thing that we can actually change our body chemistry with intention. So next slide, please. So fasting occurs 74 times in the Bible. I actually looked every one of them up and it actually never occurs without the word prayer. So I think that's a kind of an interesting thing. To lengthen thy life, lessen thy meals. So back then he didn't call it intermittent fasting, but it's close. Next slide. Hippocrates said to eat when you're sick is to feed your sickness. Hippocratic oath, next slide. So here we are, the American population. We eat three meals a day, but we put 20 additional things into our mouth on a daily basis. That's amazing. And the, the bottom line that I've always taught my patients is, you know, uh, we're overfed, we're undernourished. The food we're eating isn't of the quality that our body wants, and we develop all kinds of symptoms because of it. You want to say something? I no, you I, I really think that's true. I mean, I, I find myself, especially working from home, you know, it's just easy just to, you know, walk by the kitchen and just grab a little bite of something. So I think um, when they say we put 20 additional food items in our mouth, I, I'm i guilty of that. I, I can be very guilty of that. I only do 18, so I'm, I, I, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm better than Linda. So next, next slide, please. So um, University of North Carolina uh, did this um, huge evaluation and they had five parameters that they determined were the metabolic ideal. It, this, if we could be here, we would reduce diseases dramatically in this country. And the five things are your blood glucose, 85 or below, triglycerides under 125, HDL, that's your good cholesterol, that should be above 55, your blood pressure should be 120 or uh, over 80 or below, and your waist for a female should be less than, equal to or less than 35 inches and less than or equal to 40 inches. Here's the amazing thing. 12% of the U.S. population meets these ideals. That's scary because disease is coming right around the corner. Next mm -hmm. slide. One in five deaths are a result of diet. That's from the Lancet, which is the British Medical Journal. That's a, that's a scary thing. Yeah, we've, all, we've often said that um, if there needs to be regulation, it needs to be on the food industry. We believe that if, uh, if they would put out better quality food, we'd have healthier people. So, you know, obviously we think SHAPE is a um, pretty uh, special program because we're eating real food that God has put on this earth. We're not eating prepackaged, you know, chemically laden foods. We like everybody to eat food that God's put on this earth. So next slide. Um... If you want to dig deeper, uh, there are some books. I would suggest The Switch as being probably the best of the books if you really want to dig into intermittent fasting. Um, the Longevity Diet by Longo is pretty impressive. He's got some amazing data on people with uh, undergoing chemotherapy that uh, include intermittent fasting and the reduction of symptoms is unbelievably dramatic. The other books are also very good by Jason Fung. But the switch is probably the best book if you want to dig a little deeper. Next slide. So the good Dr. Henry, he said there are two principal methods in treating disease. Combative, which is really the medical model. And I'm not against that. There's a time and a place when you want to use some heavy artillery to, um, to knock out a disease. But wouldn't it be better not to get that disease in the first place? And so preventative medicine is what we've 
believe strongly in and we believe shape is a great tool to uh, prevent diseases. Next slide. So there are five steps to intermittent fasting or five phases. So the feeding phase is when you eat your last meal. And then the second phase is your post-absorption phase. Now this is gonna last uh, for about up to a day and you're gonna use up uh, glycogen. Now glycogen is glucose that is stored in the body. Uh, the liver manufacture is pretty interesting. Now, from, from one to two days, you're gonna go through something called gluconeogenesis. Big fancy word, gluco means sugar, neo means new, and genesis means production. So it's production of new glucose. So the, the liver will actually make glucose from protein, which is a remarkable thing. It's a, a magic act. Then we get into the ketogenic phase and there's many, many diets out right now. The ketogenic diet, the keto diets, uh, Atkins is a ketogenic diet. This is when you're going to use fat uh, for energy. And we will actually, uh, in shape, we'll, as practitioners, we're going to measure and see if you're in ketosis. Now, you, can, you can't lose your mind over this and assume if you're not in ketosis, right. you're not losing weight. <clears throat> we just use a urine specimen. It's not the best system, but I knew, I knew when I did this um, that you weren't going to do a finger stick to check it. So uh, the better way to do it is a finger stick, and we measure something called alpha. Well, I'm not going to get into that, but we measure something that is better. But again, the ketogenic phase, when you're burning fat for energy, this is a good thing. And then interesting, <clears throat> this a protein conservation phase, this is five plus days. Muscle wasting is spared. And you think, well, won't, won't you kind of break down your body? This is actually how people could survive con the concentration camps. We've all seen the, those horrible pictures of, uh, of the survivors, and they were just wasting away, but they didn't, they didn't pass away. And it's pretty an interesting thing. And then there's this big fancy word called autophagy. And we're going to get into that. That is the key to intermittent fasting. And we're going to talk about it much more. But auto means self, and phagy means eating. So it's eating yourself. Basal metabolism is enhanced and oftentimes you'll correct it. And there's anti-aging aspects to not eating food. So it's pretty interesting. So I just want to just chime in when people are thinking keto, ketogenic, everybody, you know, when they're, um, you know, doing a program similar to ours, they think that it's all about uh, being in ketosis. And of course, I think you all have learned that um, it's not all about ketones to us. We are doing a Diascreen 10 and your practitioners are looking at 10 markers. <coughs> They're all really, really important. Five of the markers will show if you're in starvation. So it's so critically important to have your urine tested when you're doing phase one fast track. Okay. Next slide. <clears throat> So there's lots of ways of doing intermittent fasting. We actually do fasting every day. If we eat at seven o'clock and don't eat till seven the next morning, that's a 12 hour fast. And that's what it, we actually should be doing. There's the 16 hour, <clears throat> which is you- some water? Uh, yeah, give me some water, okay. Uh, 16 hour, there's no food from seven till noon the following day. The one I used most commonly was the old man, which is one meal a day. You eat at seven and you don't eat again till seven the next day, noon to noon. Uh, whatever you want to be. I'm going to grab some to drink here. We're skipping meals two days a week, a day in between every other day. Absolute fast, we do water only. Not a big proponent of that. Dry fast, really not a proponent of that. And then we have the protein fast where you do no protein or only protein. There can be advantages to doing protein because it can force ketosis. So we kind of let it up to the practitioner to choose what they want to do. But the one I had the best success was, was the old man which is one meal a day. Next slide. <clears throat> so what are the benefits? Well, look at them. It's incredible. It enhances all healing outcomes and it upregulates your anti-inflammatory cytokines. So inflammation is the big buzzword today in medicine. It's all about inflammation and being out of control, but inflammation is part of the healing process. And there are there are inflammatory triggers that should occur. And these triggers are sent to the cell wall They go into the cell and a whole bunch of things happen. So we have, I always, when I teach inflammation, there are stranger uh, signals, which are things like viruses and bacteria and parasites and fungus. 
and then there's a danger of signals, which is you crash on your motorcycle and you get all kind of dinged up. That's, that's going to create an inflammatory cascade. Medicine is right now trying to um, stop inflammation at a cellular level. There's a, when the inflammation signal gets into the cell, it forms what are called inflammasomes. They're, they're quickly made and then they're broken down. And these inflammasomes create these cytokines. And these are the things that are not good if they are there a long period of time. They cause all kinds of interesting things. So again, there's nothing wrong with inflammation because it's part of the human process. It's when it gets out of control that we have to worry about it. Anti-aging, <clears throat> phenomenal um, work with uh, reducing uh, the speed of aging by fasting. It's uh, uh, a mass amount of books that get into that. And actually, when you're not spending energy on, on digesting food, you can extend that energy other places in the body to heal. And it's really quite an amazing thing. The longevity, there's a book by, um, uh, it's called Maximum Lifespan by a guy named Max Wolford. Um, he did the biosphere in Arizona where they put the people in for four years. It didn't work out so well, but uh, they had just some amazing research that enhanced longevity. It actually kickstarts your immune system. Uh, it increases something called mitogenesis, which in your cells, you have what are called mitochondria. And they manufacture a, a chemical that is the gas of our body. It's called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So it is literally the gas that gives us energy. <clears throat> so one of the complaints I had when in practice, almost, mul I mean, multiple times every day is, oh, doc, I'm just so tired. Well, there are mitochondrial issues involved with these folks. It enhances autophagy. We're going to get back to that, which is the self-eating. It increases cellular repair. It increases your human growth hormone. Uh, it improves insulin sensitivity. It improves your brain function, cognitive. It balances mm -hmm. circadian rhythm. So there's, there's a rhythm to life, and we can get knocked out of that rhythm. Most people feel it when they don't sleep well, and that rhythm is really messed up, and it causes adrenal issues. It balances and it enhances something called leptin. Leptin is a hormone that fat cells produce to tell your brain, quit feeding me. Kind of an interesting thing. It decreases neuronal breakdown. So it, it, it will stop the breaking down of nerves. Where this is significant is in dementia. Uh, if we can, the research done in cognitive decline and intermittent fasting is nothing short of remarkable. In Longo's book, he talks about that. It'll decrease autoimmune symptoms. I think a lot of autoimmune symptoms, I think, come from food sensitivity. So I think just stopping food, there is this anti-inflammatory effect. And then this is the interesting thing. It removes the veil from God. It allows your brain to tap into some spiritual strength. That's why you see it 47 times in the Bible with the word prayer. No, 74. 74. What did I say? 47. Ah, a little dyslexic going yeah. on here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So there are some myths. It's starvation. It's not. You'll be overwhelmed by hunger. You won't be. It, it, it's remarkable. And again, it has to do with intent. It'll increase low blood sugar. No, it doesn't. It actually has the opposite effect. The brain won't get enough glucose. Well, the purpose, <laughs> the purpose of insulin is to not let glucose into your brain. The number one cause of blindness is in, in this the country today is diabetes. It's when the blood sugar gets too high and it causes neural destruction of the optic nerve and blindness is, is the end result. It'll cause overeating. It actually won't. And it leads to eating disorders and it won't. Well, I do want to say um, the point overwhelmed by hunger. Um, I think um, many people, the first day that they're doing, if they're uh, fasting longer than, than 24 hours, the first day is toughest. But as you go on, I, it, for me, it gets a little bit easier. So I think everybody's going to have different experience with that. Next slide. <clears throat> so how do you break a fast? Well, it's breakfast. You, you don't do it with a cheeseburger it's, or a pizza. You want to gently do this. Uh, broths are really good. I, I think um, a lot of these bone broths are just really, really health promoting. And I even hate to say this because I cannot stand apple cider vinegar. I can't stand the smell of it, but it really is a good tissue cleanser. Uh, Celtic sea salt is outstanding. It really balances minerals into your body. But the key is bring back your denser proteins, your meat proteins slowly. You want to do, do something not meat related when you break that fast. Next slide. 
Hey, big words, doctor words. I love these. Autophagy. Oh my goodness. Mean self eating. mTOR. It's the mechan mechanistic target of rapamycin. Rapamycin is a, an anti rejection drug, and this is an interesting entity. Glucagon. We'll talk to, about this. Insulin, of course, is a hormone. And then we have the IGF 1, which is insulin like growth factor 1. And then AMPK. If you want to live long, you want to enhance this thing. It's 5' adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. Hence, we use AMPK. Look, th these are big words. I get that. It would just let them float in your brain. <clears throat> allow them to just enter. And you're going you're gonna to pick up some good, good information from this. So let's begin with autophagy. Next slide. So uh, auto means self. Phagy means eating. Uh, again, 40,000 references. It was discovered by this uh, Osumi guy. He's... <laughs> He's a biologist. He actually won the Nobel Prize, as you can see here, in 2016. And he's from the Tokyo Institute of Technology. Now, we have, we have a similar place in Massachusetts called MIT. What were these people thinking with TIT? I just, I find humor <laughs> in this kind of stuff. So next slide. Let's get off that. You mean Tokyo Institute? Tokyo Institute. TIT. Uh, so what does it do? Well, when you go into autophagy, the self-eating, it recycles damaged proteins, organelles, which are little things in, in your organs, and other cellular components, and it defends against faulty and or misfolded proteins. Now, what does that mean? That's all about Alzheimer's. This is about um, these different diseases that occur uh, that cause brain problems uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Alzheimer's is the most aggressive. Uh, it provides cells with molecular st structure. And again, we're back to this mitochondria. Let's get more energy production. Next slide. This is interesting. It, it, really, it, it really heals damaged tissue. So when I was in school in the, in the late uh, 70s, God, that, that hurt to say that, uh, we were taught that if your nervous system is injured, central nervous system, it'll never uh, regenerate. And if your heart is ever injured, you can never grow a heart back heart cells back. Well, it turns out that's not true. Uh, this discovery of neuroplasticity occurred in the 1990s, and we know the heart can actually re regenerate tissue. So this is a pretty important thing. But this, it acts as a guardian of the genome, and it makes your, your cellular messengers uh, healthier. It prevents, it prevents cancer and neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Next slide. So how can you induce autophagy? How can you make it happen? Well, number one is intermittent fasting. Uh, exercise, I wouldn't do both those together. That will send the wrong message in. There are some supplements. Uh, Stragglus is a Chinese herb. It's an immune tonic. Ashwagandha, it's also known as Indian ginseng. Um, <clears throat> it's also known as withania. It goes by those things. So all these other things, caffeine, curcumin, green tea, ginger root, indole-3-carbinol is an interesting entity. It comes from your cruciferous vegetables, and it will actually convert to something called DIM, which is methane, And this is what helps you metabolize estrogen. So if you have a lot of weight in your triceps, abdomen, butt, hips, tummy, that's often uh, estrogenic weight. And by taking um, indole 3 carbonyl or DIM, it converts to DIM, methane. it'll actually help you metabolize estrogen and not store it in fat cells. Um, and the rest of the things, you know, you can just kind of read them there. And of <clears> course, <throat> um, that's why you're working with a practitioner so they can help guide you um, to know which uh, support supplements that you would need in addition to doing shape. Eat broccoli, it's high in <laughs> Eat lots of broccoli. Next slide. So, um, she proclaimed, oh, that, that, yeah, well, there's <laughs> that. You know, we didn't realize that uh, shape actually enhanced autophagy until it just flew in our face and went, well, that's kind of cool. So you are actually um, pushing your body into autophagy by doing shape. Next slide. mTOR, uh, protein complex, um, it, it's... If you read the book, The Switch, this is where it really gets into this thing. So the switch that will either activate autophagy or mTOR, which is going to build more protein, store energy in glucose and fat. So the problem is our modern lifestyle really keeps us turned towards growth constantly. And that growth is in fat cells oftentimes. 
And obviously when mTOR is ruling the roost, there's no autophagy going to be triggered. We want autophagy to happen. Next slide. Glucagon. So this is made by your pancreas um, and it's, it's stimulated by eating protein. This is the low carb approach. And if you, and this is why these low uh, carb diets tend to be very aggressively promoted to help you lose weight. And, and they do. It's, it's if you go into starvation by accident, that's when you get into trouble. So if you eat carbs, you won't allow glucagon to happen. Next slide. Insulin, it's also made by the pancreas, the beta cells, not the alpha cells. Um, and it's stimulated by eating sugar. Uh, so it lowers glucose in your blood and promotes the storage of glucose in muscle, liver, and fat stores. So good guy, bad guy. You don't want it high levels of insulin in your body. And of course, when it says um, ingesting carbs, you know, there are good carbs and there are bad carbs. So, um, you know, I think we've been teaching everybody that in our program. Your practitioner's probably working with you to help you learn about that. Next slide. IGF-1. So your growth hormone will actually stimulate your liver to produce this thing, but only when there's insulin available. So the problem happens if it's too high or too low. So next slide, I'll kind of qualify this a little better. Next slide, please. So there are very good things about, um, and you can read these, what are the positives, muscle mass and decreased inflammation, all that sounds really good. However, in excess, the cons are big. Um, they're cancer promoters and they're short, shortening your lifespan. The key is balance on this thing. And shape obviously balances this thing out. Next slide, please. AMPK, love this thing. So this is all anti-aging. So when it's activated, this AMPK, uh, autophagy is gonna be enhanced. It will decrease fat stores in your abdomen. It increases insulin sensitivity. So it's, it's, it's really uh, how the drug metformin works. Metformin is a drug to give to diabetics. So intermittent fasting and shape enhance AMPK. And this is a remarkable entity. And, and it's just, when, when we built shape, I built it for Linda because she gained some weight with menopause and lost her mind. <laughs> and, and so we did, it was built as a weight loss program and then all the miracles occurred. And then I had to try to figure out how, these, how are these miracles happening? And that's where we got into the science. So next slide, please. So here it is, timing and balance. So it decreased insulin and decreased IGF-1 turns down mTOR and turns up autophagy. So when mTOR is activated, autophagy is suppressed. When mTOR is silenced, autophagy is enhanced. Increased insulin and increased IGF-1 activate mTOR. So basically the shape, I, I know that's confusing, but the bottom line is the shape program enhances everything that's positive. It turns on the things that should be turns on, turned on and turns off the things that should be turned off. I like this. So summing this up with the next slide. Ideal metabolism requires these to turn on autophagy. Low insulin, low mTOR, high M AMPK. Intermittent fasting does this and the SHAPE program does this. Together, it is nothing short of remarkable. And again, I got into intermittent fasting to for patients that were stalling. I tried protein days and that kind of stuff. Had better success with intermittent fasting than I did with protein days in, in stalling. So I think you wanna share a story. Yeah, so um, when, we, um, when we decided that uh, we really wanted to um, investigate if intermittent fasting was gonna be good with our program, we had um, many clinics across the country uh, working with their patients and testing and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna test this myself. So a year ago, um, yeah, last fall I started and I was doing um, intermittent fasting and I was testing different things. I was going a couple days, I was just doing from night until morning. I was just testing all different kinds of things. But what I would do would fast and I would go back and eat whatever I wanted because I wasn't really doing shape. As many of you know, we've said it so many times, we do shape as a cleanse quarterly and it wasn't, it wasn't cleanse time. And so I was intermittent fasting and just eating normally and I wasn't accomplishing anything. It wasn't beneficial to me. 
wasn't helping me shed the few pounds that I had gained. So then I tried intermittent fasting, doing fast track, but I will be honest with you, I was cheating. I was doing fast track and I was cheating. I was pretending like I was doing, I was saying I was doing fast track, but I was not honestly doing fast track exactly the way fast track is meant to be done. So, so we have a sign that says, wouldn't it be nice if liar, liar, pants on fire, the pants actually started on fire. So yeah, we have that. his pants would have been on yeah, fire. Yeah, my pants would have been on fire. But, you know, I was honest about it. You know, I was like, okay, I'm um, doing fast track, but hey, I'm cheating here with it. So it, and that, it wasn't really beneficial. So then I got really serious and I did intermittent fasting with fast track. And so now I had all through the fall cheated and went through the holidays and that was crazy. And then January of this year, I got really serious. And so I buckled down and I did intermittent fasting and I would fast, I would eat um, dinner on Sunday night and I would fast from dinner on Sunday night. Sometimes I would go all the way to Tuesday dinner. Not always. I would let my body dictate what I could and couldn't do. And my, I, I used to be a hypoglycemic, but after shape that just straightened that up. But if my body is starting to do uh, not, it's not feeling right and I need to feed it, it will give me really clear signs. I will have cognitive challenges. I will feel like a crybaby. I will get really shaky. So I would know when it was time for me to just jump back in and it's time for me to break that fast. And when we say don't exercise, I couldn't do any kind of aggressive exercise because I, you know, I was really water fasting when I was doing that. And I was doing okay, but it wasn't until I started adding some walking. When I started walking, that's when it really made a difference. Yeah, for and me. when I said uh, you wouldn't want to do intermittent fasting with aggressive exercise. With aggressive, right. Yeah, walking is um, kind of what we're made to do. So I was walking and um, and when I was back in St. Louis, I had to go back um, last winter to help uh, take care of a little grand granddaughter. And so I was <laughs> back in St. Louis for seven weeks and Todd was in, in Wisconsin. And I joined the Y to give myself something to do when I wasn't taking care of little Kaya. And I would go and I would walk on the treadmill and I would do the sauna. And on, on the um, days that I had Kaya, I would take her to the Y and I would get in the pool and I would walk up and down with her walking, walking, walking. And, um, you know, she was 18 months old and, you know, trying to teach her how to swim. So that is when my body just opened up. Everything opened up for me and I dropped all the extra weight that I had put on. I had injured my back like, um, uh, like four years ago and I gradually put on some weight because I wasn't able to exercise. So I've shed all that and um, it was gone, I would say by um, probably the 1st of May. And I went all through the summer and we had all kinds of company and eating all kinds of crazy. And I will tell you, as soon as um, company would leave and we weren't eating crazy and having Todd's famous hot cocoa, um, that, that would get us into trouble. It's really good, but <laughs> we were having too much hot cocoa. And um, as soon as I would go right back to eating clean, I had locked in that new set point because my body would just go right back. So if I would, you know, over, you know, a weekend or whatever, we, three or four days, we'd have house guests and, you know, we do crazy. As soon as I would get back, my body went right back. So I have been able to maintain that and I still am doing intermittent fasting. So um, it's been really beneficial for me. And, um, and I don't think there's any one way to do it. I think you have to really see what works best for you and your lifestyle and your total health picture and work with your practitioner for sure. Be working with your practitioner so they can, so they can be observing and checking your urine. And of course we're doing all that when I'm 
when I'm doing fasting. So this is wonderful. We love, um, love meeting with you guys.